And the generator architecture and the discriminator architecture, we are gonna improve upon it in the next paper, which is ESR GAN, Enhanced Super Resolution Generative Adversarial Networks. For network architecture, you have a low resolution image, you do convolution on it, you push it through multiple layers of blocks or basic blocks, the convolution, you do upsampling, a bunch of other convolution, and then you're gonna output the super resolved image. Initially, the super resolved image without training is gonna end up being really bad, but that's actually the role of the training to make the super resolved images look good throughout training. So now it's a matter of writing down your loss function. But before we do so, what are these basic blocks? Super resolution GAN, the paper that we just covered, has layers of this form, convolution, bash norm, ReLU, convolution, bash norm, the residual connection. Uh, this paper says that bash norm, you don't need it. It reduces the quality. Let's just remove bash norm. That's one contribution. Another one is in part one of the course, we cover uh, dense blocks or dense nets for classification. We can borrow the same ideas and use them for super resolution. And the idea of dense net is this layer right before the convolution. Not only you are looking at uh, two steps before, and uh, you are going to be looking at every other steps before that, or all of the steps before it. This is a generalization of residual connections. And what you are doing here is concatenation. Whenever you see two arrows merging, from two prior layers or multiple prior, prior layers, you're just concatenating, concatenating them channel-wise. And these are within a block. And within a block, you don't play around with the resolution. And that's the, that's the reason you can simply concatenate. And there's going to be some transition layers that you play around with, the, with your um, resolution. But here, you don't even play around with the resolution. Everything is going to be low resolution up until this layer where you do your upsampling because you want to keep these operations cheap. And then you are going to have residual in residual. There is going to be a big residual connection here, and there is going to be a smaller residual connections here. And that's why it's called residual and residual. For super resolution, these residual connections are really important. Why is that? Because the low resolution image is already a good approximation of the high resolution image. And then you're just missing some details. And this is another motivation for using residual connections. Okay, perfect. That was for the architecture. What is your loss function? This one is not from this paper, but it's actually a good idea to learn it here. In a regular GAN loss, so don't look at the things after this arrow, otherwise you're going to get confused. Up until this point, this is the usual standard GAN loss that we are used to. You show it a real image, featureize it, push the features through sigmoid. It needs to say, is it real or fake? And the discriminator needs to do the correct thing. Say, this is, these are real, these are fakes. But for relativistic discriminator, you're going to be comparing a real image to a bunch of fake images in your mini batch. And then you are answering this question. Your discriminator is answering this question. Is this image more realistic than the fake ones. This way, if your generator is getting better and better, your discriminator needs to work harder to say that this image looks more realistic than the fake ones. It's as if uh, when, uh, when somebody is giving you a grade, you're always being compared to the average of the class and you need to always be above average. This way, if the class was higher, you are gonna go higher as well you're gonna get better and better. And the same thing for the fake ones. The fake ones should be more fake. And this idea of base, this idea of baseline, we also saw it when we were doing a little bit of reinforcement learning before. So this is your standard discriminator. What is C? This is the one right before pushing it through sigmoid. So C could take values from negative infinity to positive infinity. You haven't yet squashed it to zero to one. And then mathematically speaking, what are you doing? You have a real image. You push it through your architecture, stop right before the sigmoid, subtract the average of the fake data, and then push it through your sigmoid. So this is exactly what we had here. I think 
mathematical terms. In terms of your loss function, your discriminator is going to say that this real image looks more real, more realistic than the fake ones. And the other objective is you're switching the role of the fake and the real. And it's going to be one minus that. And then your generator is going to go the reverse route. It's going to try to make the discriminator make a mistake. And here I, xi, i is not actually counting your data. It's, it stands for input. I input, that's the input low resolution image. So xf, whenever you see xf, they are high resolution or super resolved images coming out of your generator. And then the same tricks as before. You're going to use the perceptual loss with a minor catch. You're going to use the features of a VGG network, but before activating them, before pushing them through ReLU so that they can have positive and negative rewards. Otherwise, you, you're always comparing positive numbers together. And this is doable because of this uh, relative discriminator. What else? Then you're going to have your content loss. The content should be preserved in L1 sense. The other one is your generator loss. And then the perceptual one is the one that is coming out of VGG, a pre-trained VGG network. And not only that, you do a little bit of interpolation in the parameter space of two networks. One of them is trained this way using this loss function, the perceptual loss. Another one is trained using uh, L2 loss mean squared error loss. And then you interpolate between the two. This is a hyperparameter that you can play around with. And this is cool because this is gonna happen after the training is done. You have a network trained using mean squared error loss. You have a trained network using GAN loss. Now you have a hyperparameter here, alpha, that once the training is done, you can play around with it and look at the quality of the images after the training is done. So it's another knob for, to, for you to tune and generate better and better quality images. And why did you go through that trouble? SR GAN is already good enough, but you're gonna go ahead. You're really happy after one year of hard work. You're gonna show this image to your manager in a big company and your manager needs to make the customers happy. And then the customers or the manager is going to come and say, I see some artifacts here, your high quality image. There is some artifact in this direction, if you look carefully. And ESR GAN doesn't have that. And this way, your customers are going to be happier. And this is important. These customers are really picky ones. They are gamers. They are uh, the ones that are going to be paying for a movie and go watch it. Okay. They don't care how much trouble the engineering team went through. They want to see high quality images or high quality movies. Okay. Any questions about ESR? Yeah. Was everything clear? Okay. Perfect.